Provide a work-life balance. They like that, that's important to them. Next, give a sense of personal accomplishments. They like to feel like they're achieving something because they got tremendous feedback from their parents about how well they're doing in all things. Provide meaningful feedback. They can see through crap in a second. Don't give them canned feedback. It has to be meaningful. It has to be something that is relative to their what's in it for me. And how does it get me to that end, that fulfillment that this money gets me to, but what do I need to do to get there? Maybe it's letting them know about commission reports or the money left on the table. Next is promote teamwork. Collaboration is singularly one of the most important words to this generation. They love to collaborate. They live the team dynamic. Next is encourage creative thinking. This is going to be hard for some of you to swallow because it's going to make you think at certain times when you're working with these individuals, you will need to let them come up with some of the plans. Yeah, but they're 24, Kurt. They can't possibly come up with some type of profit-oriented, managerial, promotional, business-oriented plan. Yes, they can in a way in the store that makes perfect sense to them and the interaction with, by the way, who's their number one client? Them. And you're saying you're not gonna give them part of the creative thinking process because they can't, they haven't got an MBA. Next is offer perks. And not just money, because Harvard did a study and said the number one thing, the way people wanna be recognized in the workplace today is a verbal thank you. Number one. Number two written thank you. You're going to see a video in a moment where people are given certificates of achievement. And you think it's cheesy, and it's meaningful to them. You know what number 16 was? This is going to be really, it's going to be counterintuitive. Money. Blows me away. But that's why I do what I do. Okay, who am I? To me, anything is possible. I seek out creative challenges and want to find new ways of doing things. I'm a multitasker who can juggle email on my Blackberry while talking on my cell phone and instant messaging online. I'm not shy about trying to change the company I work for if you give them an opportunity to have a voice and value that voice. I expect constant change and improvement. Speed is incredibly important to this generation. Here's a book that uh, I'm currently almost done with. I bought it uh, last week. Not Everyone Gets a Trophy by Bruce Tolgan. Fantastic book when it comes to Gen Y understanding Gen Y. In fact, let me read you his chapters, if you'll allow me. Indulge me, please, because I think these are important to know. Get them on board fast with the right message. Get them to speed up quickly and turn them into knowledge workers. Practice in loco parentis management. Let me tell you what that means. That's Latin for in lieu of parent or in place of parent. Now, some of your, your eyes are going up in your head and you're, I'm seeing the white. I'm not saying be their parent, nor is Bruce Tolgan in his book. He's saying that because of the mannerisms their, their, their parents uh, worked with them on, embraced them, they're used to having rigid boundaries with feedback. You don't have to be their mom or dad. Give them the gift of context. I'll go into that in a second. It's telling them the story, telling them the why, the whole picture. Get them to care about great customer service. They may not know what they don't know. They've only been alive 24 years. Uh, teach them how to manage themselves. And I love this next one. Teach them how to be managed by you. Retain the best of Generation Y one day at a time. This is not an event. You're not going to bring someone into your store, into your culture, train them for one day and think everything's fixed. That's not how these guys are wired. When I say guys, I mean girls too. It's a Midwestern thing. Build the next generation of leaders. They want to be on a path. They want development. They crave training. They crave peer interaction. And yet I look at businesses, I work with businesses where the owners and managers or senior managers just don't want to involve that much development because it takes too much time. And yet it's the one thing that they crave. I want to, I want to take a step back. That's a great, very good point that sometimes it's our fault that we may have caused some of this. But let's, let's think about that for a second. Two things are influencers to culture. One is, or I'm sorry, two generations. One is culture and society, so that's what's happening peripherally around someone's life. Education, uh, the global aspect. Oh, and I did forget, I told you I was gonna link 
uh, the greatest generation to, to generation Y. I will just in a moment. But you have to remember the other influencer of someone's decision making in this generation is also family. And I stated earlier that sometimes family dynamics might cause them to have different value systems. For instance, I'm technically a son of a boomer. However, I'm so close to the cusp, I have more boomer tendencies than I have Generation X. That's another thing you have to understand, is that your year doesn't necessarily denote that you're this. Other things influence how you make decisions. There's just common value systems that are, that are present on a much more general scale. That the part, that's the only part we can talk about. Great, great question and great point. We did this, or maybe no one did anything and they're in the workplace. Does that make sense? No one gave them praise. No one said you're gonna do a good job. And they're the ones working for you right now. Characteristics of Gen Y. Motivated by causes, not companies. I love the fact that when you walk out this door, you see a table that talks about the children's uh, hunger. And I'm thinking, do you understand that Gen X wants that more than profit? They don't link profit to anything to them because they, they don't feel it's part of what they're made of. They would rather a company be mean something. So they're part of a community in some way that they then can say, yeah, I work for them. You know, they did this, this, and this for the community. We, we help keep our ecosystem friendly, and we also we recycle in a big way. I'm proud of the, being part of a company that does that. That's important to them. Next is prepared to change jobs. We've already discussed that ad infinitum. Expressive but blunt. They are expressive but blunt. Sometimes they, I don't, <laughs> sorry, this is me ca causing a bias to come out. I don't think they think what they're thinking, what they should think when they say something. <laughs> but they are expressive. That is a very good thing. Fast and impatient. This goes back to speed. I'm going to get into when it comes to your first day of hiring someone in Gen Y. Be very, very careful how slow you make the transition and onboarding process. Be very careful, because, and also in hiring, between recruiting and hiring, if you're not fast to hire, they're fast to leave. Next, uh, we go into anxious for feedback. They love and crave feedback. Now this doesn't mean doting feedback, like great hair, where'd you get it? It's gotta be meaningful feedback. It's gotta be linked to a value system and, and what they value. One of the things that I will tell you that's not in this course, but it's in courses I offer, is the most important thing a manager and leader can do is get to know your team, get to know their motivational triggers, and if you can know that, you'll get closer to driving their performance based on their value system, not yours. Anxious for feedback, tech savvy, high performance, and high maintenance. I think we can all agree high maintenance, but again, is that relative to them being high maintenance or relative that we don't understand what they need, so it takes us twice as long because we don't have the answers. All right, next one. We're going to go into...